Toot here on Kiwi. Time now is 13 minutes past eight. You're listening to the Radio Ammo Breakfast, only on Kiwi. We're off to the theatre now. A theatrical production just started in Auckland City called Autobahn. Kip Chapman is one of the directors behind it. And he joins me in the Kiwi studio this morning. Good morning to you, Kip. Hello there. Lovely to have you in. Now, is it, uh, now what theatre what theater are we talking about here? It's at the Basement Theatre, which used to be the old silo theatre if people haven't been there in a while. It's been it's had a rejig. Whereabouts is that? It's um, well, it's next to the town hall. Oh yeah, kind of um, bottom of Lower Grays Ave. Yeah, sort of opposite the. If people go to the council a lot, it's opposite the council building. If okay. you're paying lots of parking fines. So it's called the basement, but what's the silo? What's happened to the silo? The silo's, the silo's moved to Herald. Okay. There's yeah. a whole rig jig of theatres yeah. at the moment. What's it's going it's on tremendously it? exciting stuff. Oh, it must be. And apparently, people are getting kicked out of Sky City now. Are they? Yeah. So I don't know where those people will be going. So who knows? But is uh, is that a sign that the theatre industry is healthy at the moment because people are moving around and they're yeah. upgrading? Or yeah, well, Silo has moved because they want they need um, more people. We we were performing there, but it was only like holding a hundred people, and we were getting it was just selling out every night. So they've moved on up. There's a new theatre called Q Theatre being built, sort of opposite the Silo. In fact, they actually just started digging their first. The first bit about two days ago, which yeah. was quite good. They were doing an archaeological dig to make sure oh, really? there are no bones and stuff underneath. There's bound to be all sorts of things there. Yeah, really? yeah quite cool. Eh? One of our actors in Autobahn is um, is an archaeologist as well. No. Yeah. Archaeologist a, a actor. Qualified. It's kind of like Indiana Jones. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. I think qualified really? archaeologist actor. Slash think, actor. It's like a double threat. Because I think you need to study for years to, to do both. To I be th- actor and, and archaeologist. Yeah, and there wouldn't be much crossover, I, I wouldn't assume. So it would have to be split the training, unless it's Indiana Jones, as you say. Yeah, true. She's pretty. <laughs> she's pretty foxy. She. Yeah, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. Um, uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of talk about theatre at the moment. There seems to be a lot of energy, as 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 you as you were saying. In fact, I was talking to a writer the other day who writes for uh, TV, and she was saying that she's looking forward to just getting out of the whole that whole biz and uh, getting into some theatre. Oh, sweet. Yeah. I was like, yeah. I mean. I've always done theatre, so so it's kind of it's natural to me. But I think more people are going back to it. I, in my opinion, it's kind of like you know how lots of um, rock bands and stuff are going live again and they're touring. Yeah, it kind of to me theatre is the exact same sort of thing. It's like it's like a rock concert live. You can get to see like we've got Annie Whittle in in my piece, um, and there's um, Olivia Tenor who played Tuesday on Shortland Street. Like the, these are people who you can come along. To the theatre at night and, wa- and watch them live, yeah. watch them do their stuff live. It, it, it's really exciting. Is and you can be in it's the basement, which is a tiny theatre, so you can be literally five metres away from them. Because it's that, that uh, you get the reaction straight away, it's, uh, because it's so live, you yeah. know, you don't, it's not like TV where it's um, passive, I suppose. Yeah, it, it, t- TV, it's, it's filtered through a few things. Mm. This is live, and if an audience does something, then, th- then there's going to be a reaction on stage. It's just a whole different experience and in my opinion it's a it's a it's a more exciting experience yeah uh tell us about autobahn itself where, where does where does it come from autobahn is a um it's a collection of six um six scenes all based in a car and it's by neil abute who's um quite a famous um playwright and quite a lot of his work's been seen in auckland um done quite a lot by the silo theater um some girls the mercy seat uh, the shape of things auckland theater company did that yeah and he's like he's an incredible writer extremely um dark and very very funny and so so autobahn is this collection of six scenes of of different relationships in cars there are, there's a mother picking up her daughter from rehab there's a guy and a girl doing one of the most awkward breakup scenes you've ever seen in your life. There's a guy trying to apologise who yeah. just can't apologise. It's it's skin. Yeah, it just makes your skin crawl. Some of them. He, the writer, he just makes. Oh, it, it it's like the office. Some of the, the the awkwardness that comes out. Yeah, it's great. So it sounds like it sounds like the car is an excuse just to get these scenarios together. Yeah, yeah, and he also explores other themes about how how people misinterpret other things and and the American dream, which is which I I mean that's one of my things that I'm really interested in. Just. Mm. Just the the falseness of the American dream. That's another issue that's explored. Is it taxi cab confessions? 
You know, is it? Is yeah, that- yeah. I suppose it is. Like, I suppose if you're in a car, you're you kind of open up a little bit more. Yeah. I think I I suppose it's because you don't have to look at anyone. You can kind of just look out. Yeah. Look out of the road and concentrate just on the. I know there's a there's a lot. There's too yeah. I tell you what. There's too much of a movies. Is uh, is the driver looking at looking the, looking at the passenger for too long? Exactly, and I going, can't oh, believe that. Going to crash? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. And that's all you think about. You completely lose the. Um, you do, because you're worried about the fact exactly. that they're, they're meant to be driving. Exactly. Oh, you you think the same thing as me? <laughs> I, I get taken there away. There should from be the, there should be some kind of rule, actors' rule, about how long you you should, you're allowed to take your attention away from the road. Yeah, it should be in a, a director's guidebook. So have you uh, thought about that? Because oh it, yeah, mine looks the whole time. Because someone's always extremely driving, right? safe. Yeah, it's not backseat stuff. Uh, no, no backseat. Right. Some have stopped. Yeah. So, well, so that's they're wise. fine. So they're fine. That's legal. You, you're allowed to talk still in a car, yeah. aren't you? Um, I'm a little bit unclear, but probably yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's all. It's getting a bit murky at the moment. Yeah. But no one's on the phone though. Um, no, no one's no. on the phone. If they would, they, it's American, so they'd probably have one of those... Um, a Bluetooth. <laughs> is that those Bluetooth earpieces? <laughs> They're awesome. <laughs> yeah, aren't they? Kind of, yeah. Yeah, I was, at, I, was, I was at a bank the other day, and someone was talking on one of those in the queue, and they were just mouthing off about some property deal that they were doing. Was it, I, I it like was the ones just, that kind of uh, have got, like, the blue glow. Yeah. So the blue glow at the yeah. end of them. Yeah. We were um, travelling around America, um, a friend of mine, a couple of years ago, and the amount of people who had them there, it was just... Yeah. It was just and it always seemed to be the people who lead, needed them least had them sort of strapped to their ears. <laughs> it was crazy. Always talking really loud on them as well. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they're not, they don't pick up very well. No, it could be. Yeah. yeah it's a technical thing. So you've, um, you've, you've, you're directing only one part, so one, one of the six. Yeah, so, so there are six scenes in this, and... So, um, so the way the company has worked, um, who, who have created this, um, the emergency room, they've they've paired up six directors with six um, with twelve actors. So there are two people in each scene. And who are you working with? I'm working with Annie Whittle and Bruce Phillips, okay. which is awesome. And yeah. they were just in History Boys, which was on a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And they're fantastic. And what also the emergency room does is pair up um, inexperienced people with experienced people. I've I've acted for. For years, but I'm just starting to get into directing, so I've been paired up with um, these two great experienced actors. And how do you think your direction is going to be different from, say, the other directors, and also um, uh, how the scene has been done previously by other directors around the world? Yeah, well, that's the great thing about theatre is you can you can take different takes on it, and I think it still works. I mean, I've taken certainly taken a, what I hope to be an interesting... But um, you, you don't change the dialogue, do you? No, 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 never change the dialogue. But you can change the costume, and you can also change the meaning. That's that's the beauty of um, working on pieces. Like, you can you, you can you can mess with stuff to, to make it... How do you do that? By, by changing the inflection and the way things are I think are you set? can change tone. Like, yeah. I could... You can say to someone, I love you, in many, many different mm-hmm. ways, and it might mean I love you, or it might mean... Please get out of my house. <laughs> I'm I'm sick and tired of you. Yeah. But what we've found, we we we're, we've all been rehearsing over the last month in, in sort of different areas all around Auckland, and we only got together like the day before um, we we opened. Huh. And it was really interesting to see the difference in all of the scenes and the difference in all of the styles, because some are funny and some are a bit um, uh, more dramatic. But then also there was an amazing amount of little small things that kind of linked through and. Mm. And there was a continuing of the style, it's, so so there is a whole sort of overarching sort of connection between all of them. Four out of the six women had um, had crosses were wearing crosses, and so they were right. individual decisions that were made by the directors and the actors. Right. Yet it's all sort of come together, and it was like, oh yeah. So we all think our uh, actresses are religious women. Yeah, interesting. I suppose if we talk, the play talks about the American dream, and I suppose yeah. You kind of instantly go, yeah, that sort of Bible Belt, yeah, religious person. It's quite crucial, really, isn't it? It's part of that. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's on at the Basement Theatre now. On at, at the Basement Theatre, it's on at eight pm. Yeah, tickets are about so daily, uh, daily except for Sunday and Monday. Okay, so not daily at all actually. No. Tuesday to Saturday. That's good. It's on till next Saturday. Tickets you get to, are around twenty bucks. You get to go out on hospo nights, don't you? On Sunday night, hang out with all the hospo people. Ex- yeah, ex- yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> tickets to, are what? To relax. T- tickets are about 20 bucks through um, iTicket, I believe. Yeah. Or you go onto the basement website. Okay. It's cool. funny. 
That's what I like about it. Worth travelling for if you're in Christchurch. Get in the car. Get, a get, a, oh, get yeah. in the car. Now get in the car. car. <laughs> yeah. Take take the drive, and um, come on, come off and see it. Kip Chapman, one of the directors behind Autobahn at the Basement Theatre. Thanks so much for uh, joining us.